Lagos State, Ikorodu, Ekpe, Badagri, Etiosa, Ikeja, and the Lagos Island. This magical city by the waters, the city that rules all other cities, the biggest cultural melting pot and commercial hub in all of West Africa. This is the island where dreams never really die. This is the center of excellence. All the greats have been here. From the great Zeke of Africa and his mentor, Herbert Macaulay, Henry Carr, whose library was so big, he donated to universities. The gentlemanly Alhaji Tafar Balewa, to the sage himself, Chief of Bafemi Awolowo. This also was their city. It is the city of Bola Ahmed Adekunle Tinumbu, man of many parts and great exploits, meaning different things to different people, yet simply known to many as Bola Tinumbu or BET, the most influential and widely connected politician of his generation. Born March 29, 1952, Bola hit the ground running, a man in a hurry. He knew he had an appointment with fate. Destiny has preordained him for a job. After his elementary Through all those years in cold, windy Chicago, his mother, Mama Alhaja Abibatu Mogaji, great woman, may Allah rest her soul, stood firmly behind him, supporting him in every way possible. However, like many other young, hard-working Nigerians, he did not put all his eggs in one basket. Neither did he behave like the son of an influential woman. We met in Chicago, we were all struggling students, you know. I mean, working hard to make, to, to better our life. He worked as a doorboy. He was a security guard and drove cabs on those chilly streets of Chicago as he burned the midnight oil to excel in school. We have no money. We have to go to work Two, time, two jobs, go to school, and at the same time, come home, no sleep. So at that time, our eyes, it's always like red because we have no, we don't have enough sleep. We work in a place called, huh, let me tell you, Buru. It's a factory where the temperature is about five, 600 degree high. Most of us work till 11 o'clock at night. So you come home, you take a shower, the party up normally starts by like one o'clock. So we go to party till three or four o'clock in the morning. <laughs> then we, 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 sometimes some of the party, they have breakfast. So we, we leave there, we come home, get ready to go to work or go to, or school, to school. Upon graduation, High quality companies like Arthur Anderson, Deloitte, Haskins and Sells, now Deloitte, Haskins and Touche, even GTE, the largest utility and communications company in America at the time, offered employment to the brilliant Bola Tinumbu. 
He chose Arthur Anderson Deloyd Haskins and Sells. After a few years, he moved over to GTE, from where he resigned to join Mobile in the United Kingdom. He returned to Nigeria in 1983 to work with Mobile Nigeria as an auditor. His culture of hard work and brilliance paid off and he rose up the corporate ladder in the company to the position of treasurer. Our path closed about 30, over 30 years ago. And he sought for employment on that mobile. We interviewed him and we found him very useful. We have a search system. He submitted his documents. We looked through them. We had to refer to some of the colleges he said he attended. And our AI department was satisfied that he had the certificates. Otherwise, Mobi would not employ him. And therefore, employed him as a, an audit supervisor. There and then, he grew with the company. He then carried out an audit report, which created a lot of star in the company. The findings were very, very disturbing. And um, it led to even the transfer of the chief executive at that time. Then we, we, we sat down, we looked around, we couldn't find anyone capable to be the treasurer of the company, and at least to implement the negative comments on the treasury department. We then decided that this guy who wrote this report, we should give him the job so he can implement his findings. We then called him, promoted him, and offered him the position of treasurer. And uh, he continued as treasurer of Mobile since then, until um, one day when he came in and he said he was interested in politics. But the lure of visionary politics proved too strong for Balak Tinumbu. Destiny. Sagacious, methodical, Informed, generous, accessible, urbane, debonair, constantly upwardly mobile, ever planning, always assessing, he knew he was ready. He could not sit idly by, insulated from the effects of the long years of military intervention in the country. Bola threw his heart in the political ring. His constantly fine-tuned focus, his committed vision, his purpose to better the lot of the masses unwavering. Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, the phenomenon, was born. And that is how it all started. The long journey into the unpredictable Nigerian political arena to cause change in the lives of millions of Nigerians. Once he believes in a cause, he is unstoppable. 1991, he contested and won with a landslide to represent Lagos West Senatorial District in the 1992 Senate. Even at that time, in his political party, SDP, with vastly experienced men like Sheikh Musa Yaradua, Al-Haji Atiku Abubakar and many others, he quickly became a force to be reckoned with. When I first met uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, 1992-93 Senate, then Senate was the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I was NRC and he was in uh, SDP. So we were for different parties. We met, we were a little bit... Uh, opposed to each other. So that's how we met. Somehow we do, do to our contribution in the Senate, we became friends. His first contest was to be the senatorial candidate for Lagos State. He went into it and at the end of the day, he pulled the highest number of votes compared to any other senator in the Federation. But it was not all smooth sailing. Today's Bola Tinumbu has a rich history as a democracy activist, 
a dogged fighter for just causes. With other great men and women, he confronted the authoritarian military government of the day for democracy, for Nigeria. The mandate of Chief Mashud Kashimawu Abiola, Nigeria's symbol of democracy, must be restored. They tread the path of confrontation. They formed Nadeko. Understandably, the military did not take kindly to the challenge. Some were flogged, they caged some and tortured many. Some ran abroad, while some stayed back to continue the fight. During the Nadeko period, he displayed a lot of sagacity and interest in the development and progress of Nigeria as a whole. Back in the Nadeko days, he fought for the progressive movement of this country as we see it today. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't involved on the streets, but I was involved in the law firm because I remember when he was standing trial, his late uncle, uh, Wale's dad, later Elijah Kafaru Tinumu, um, used to express concern about the quality of legal representation he was getting. Uh, incidentally, he was being prosecuted at the time by uh, late Bayo Manwa, who was the NDPP of Lagos State. So, Alaji Tinumbu will come and call a conference of lawyers, myself, Wale, and himself, and we will put up positions that we thought better uh, supported his legal representation. We were very late into the night, of course, I must, stay, I must say. So we will prepare all of those arguments all through the night and then get them to Chief Ajayi's chambers late in the night for his consideration in the continuation of trial. The following. So those, those were our own role. There were so many people playing so many roles. I found Ashwajibola uh, Metinubu a very dogged, determined, a uh, patriotic and uh, committed fighter for democracy. Nadeko period is not a very pleasant period that I really like to recall. It was tough, very, very challenging. During that time, I remember that even when I came back, I suffered amnesia up till today from the shock. This is not the life I planned for. You know, it's a life, me and my husband, children, family, we go on family vacation, not to be a life of service. But you know, uh, do I regret that? No. The more I grow in age, I advance in age, I understand that living a significant life is better than living a life of pleasure. So the significance of it is the sacrifice that has to be made. With the help of God, many strong-willed men and women willing to make great sacrifices and the support of the people, they wrestled Nigeria from the grapes of military dictatorship. The democracy we celebrate today owes its origins to those great Nigerians. Bola Tinumbu was in the thick of it from beginning to the very end. The marvel, the mystique, the magic that is today's Bola Tinumbu was birthed in the furnace of that struggle, and he has not waned since then. He had earned himself the esteemed title of Ashiwaju of Lagos. 1999. Waisa, his political network wider, his political base stronger, Bola Tinumbu came back. I met Bola Ahmed Tinumbu one-on-one in 1999 when he contested for the position of governor for, of Lagos State. He addressed the Igbo community and the outcome was very interesting. He was such a brilliant man, very intelligent, full of ideas. Right there and then, we committed to voting for him, and we did. 
on the platform of the Alliance for Democracy, AD, he became governor of Lagos State. He was a good loyal party man. Well, he, he was within the Alliance for Democracy. He was a vibrant young man. He has the ability of uh, identifying fellow hard workers and people who have talent. Where you have the likes of Professor Yemi Oshibaju, you have Mr. Dele Alaki um, heading strategy and information, you have um, BRF Tune Fashola, who was his chief of staff, Raul Farek Beshola, you know, and um, humble small ones like myself. I think the point really is to understand the kind of persona that he has the capacity to attract and also his disposition to interact with younger people. Multidimensionally, of course, uh, from the street trader to the university professor. And he has a knack for promoting talented people into position of relevance. He's very good at putting round pegs in round holes. As a followership of people that that can lay claim to have been made by him, I, I, I can be said to be one of them in that when I came into politics the first time, they supported me to be governor. He was here in Ondo State, campaigned for me. Yes, maybe along the line by the time it was the second time I was going to run, we, apart, we, we went different ways, but that's, that does not matter. It, it's all part of politics. But this time around, when I ran again, he came back, and we are we are there. So we cannot take away from him the fact that we have more or less like a number of us who can who can be said to have had from his own I mean, who are, are tutelage can be said to be in his own political class. He was like a teacher to so many people, and many people grew up under him. In eight years of inspiring leadership, he had turned Lagos State around and made it the envy of other states and their governors, some of who visited to understand his magic of governance. When you give me governor, I said, I'm not going to reinvent the way. You can't question the accomplishment. As a city governor, I envied what he accomplished in Lagos. And I could still remember when he was governor of Lagos State, he was on the third mainland bridge and there was an accident. He bumped into that accident and saw someone who had been badly injured. He stopped his convoy and personally picked on the victim and took that victim to the hospital and stayed with the victim and later asked the commissioner for health to stay there and made sure the people that were badly wounded were properly taken care of. That is a worthy example. One thing we need to learn and we need to emulate for me, first of all, we need to look at his life and his, the characteristics that surround him. One of it is generosity, which Islam has laid emphasis on which Almighty Allah too has laid emphasis on in the Holy Quran. Secondly, when you look at Bola Ahmed Tunubu, one of the embodiments that you need to see from him that is a go-getter, is a result-oriented person, is a political icon, and is a political strategist too. I actually joined his government in 2002. So I was, you know, I was with, with that cabinet for five years. Um, Ashwaju was, and I'm sure he's still, um, a, a leader that is next to none. He's a kind-hearted man. He's a man um, that he's so very compassionate, very understanding, very accommodating. Um, he, during that time, he was a leader that was truly leading from the front. 
but he was also a leader that was that was open to ideas. Um, Ashwaju never, for one, um, drilled down his his own thoughts on the entire cabinet in one full sweep. He was ready to take others on. He was ready to listen, you know, to other ideas in cabinet. And if you have superior arguments, if you have a belief that is very strong, he listens and he listens very well. In 1999, when he became the governor of Lagos State, I was deputy governor in Kano State. So we had opportunities to meet together, to attend the neck meeting, if I had the opportunity to represent my governor at that time. Even though he was in a different political party, we were in PDP, but equally the same as governor and deputy governor, we had the opportunity to know ourselves. And from there, I started seeing him as a giant politician, and he has proved me right so far. Today, I'm very, very proud to say. <laughs> someone that is not very easy to describe. Ashwajo remains an enigma. He is highly intelligent. He's very tenacious, extremely courageous. He's very dependable and very reliable. He's a very consistent person. Okay, can you tell me, is there any other man who can just beat his chest and say, yes, I've done this. I have raised councillor. I have raised supervisory councillor. I have raised chairman. I have raised even uh, senator, house of rep, even governors. Where is that man who will not use only his wife and his children? No use to his elbow because he has done his best in forming one of the largest political teams in Nigeria. When people believe this could not be done, he did it. Look at Lagos. What he enunciated, the program he formulated, have been followed by successive, and then Lagos today now is the, one of the best cities in Africa, if not in the world. This is coming from the brain of a single person, and his ability to muster people together to have a common goal. Tunumbu is one of the best governors Lagos State has ever produced. And consequence governor has followed his step. He has also improved on the life of our youth. He will sincerely assess me. I think still tenure in Lagos State. He did his best. He listens to everybody. But when he's by himself later at night, middle of the night, you know the man that never sleeps. Sometimes we have dinner around 2 a.m., 3 a.m. Not only me, but him alone, with other people like that. That's when he start thinking what everybody has said since morning. Then he'll come out with the right decision to make. He's been very consistent and has left careful without whoever the same um, governors of Lagos are very forthright. His governors of Lagos, of Lagos very spectacular. As far back as at the time when I was there as chairman of the EFCC, uh, we, we, we investigated almost all the governments then. And not just we, because we had very good quality partnership with the UK authorities and also British, I mean America, FBI. And I remember we did a thorough job in looking into Lego State, honestly, genuinely. And I told you we were working with Metropolitan Police closely, and they were also looking at some of the governments because we had very close relationship, you know, with the UK. Our people go there, we do business, we do they are interested just like we are also interested in seeing things are done very well and proper in Nigeria. And the, 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 the work we did, I, I remember I appeared 
who are before our National Assembly one time, and they were asking me about what, somebody asked about Lagos State. Say, ah, what about Lagos State? I said, well, probably we've done our own, but it also has an international angle. What I meant then was that outside Nigeria, the authorities there are also looking, because Lagos economy was extremely important to all. Very big economy, probably number five in Africa. Uh, and they were interested, they wanted to see how things are done. So they, they carried their own investigations and it was okay, legitimate, because we relate very well. And I, I told the uh, uh, National Assembly, Senate in particular, that uh, in the case of Lagos State, uh, I think the international community were also looking and checking. And they did, they did. We personally, we didn't see anything. We didn't. And that's why we ended up not taking any case to court with respect of Lagos State. There is a saying in Yoruba land, Akonda Eda Omo Dua. That's a very short phrase of what I'm going to use to qualify Ashiwa Jubola Amahed Chinubu. Hate him or like him. The truth be told, he has still been irrelevant and will continue to be very relevant in the face of democratic process, governance, and above all in the history of we the entire Yoruba people. BAT said, education is the greatest weapon against poverty. We cannot innovate without education. We need a leader who is a thinker and a doer. Bola Tinumbu did not only think, he did. Be it in infrastructure, in education, in health, in social welfare, in security, and more resounded in revenue generation. If you remember, they laid that foundation given the beginning of that Fourth Republic. And these were ideas, these were novel ideas that certainly um, couldn't all be broken in eight years. So that foundation was rock solid. That should not be so surprising. He had drank his fill from the well of wisdom and governance of the great Obafemi Awolowo. He understood early that you can be a big fish in a small pond, but that does not help anybody. His vision has always been too big for restricted spaces. He reached out, built bridges to link up with everybody. He is friends with people from every nationality. He shook hands across divides. The Emir of Bogu acknowledged his good works and made him the Jagaban Bogu leader of warriors, a title he wears with pride. He is also the Areagu of Egbalan, an honor bestowed on him by the Alake of Egbalan. We installed Ashiwajubola Ahmed Tinobu as the Areagu of Egbalan because of his performance in Lagos over the period of 1999 to 2007. The way he turned around the biggest metropolitan in Nigeria, a city of 20 million people, the performance in spite of the absence of federally collected revenue over that period was marvelous. And we thought it deserved to be encouraged to greater heights. On behalf of the Silverbed family, I present this award to a great man, an incredible man, a man who has, who has achieved great things in his lifetime. As I told in his cabinet, he had, he had an able as a member of his cabinet, and a number, I know a number of two or three northerners who are members of the chairman of, of, of boards and others. So he brought Nigeria together under his administration in Lagos. Ashiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, Jagaban Bogu, has not always been all work, politics, and books, and no play. Even a man of the people must at some point find time to attend to matters of the heart. 
find a soulmate, someone to share the evenings with. In fair, beautiful Uluremi, Bolak Tinumbu found his missing rib. It never mattered to them that their modes of worship differed. A man of the people does not permit such limitations. Since then, they have been joined in happy, fruitful marriage. When I met him, it was in the corporate world. I was teaching and children started coming and, you know, our career over the years, you know, took a different turn. And from each turn comes different challenges. But for where we are at now, I see him being a father to so many, be a husband to so many people, be a friend to so many people, be a big brother to so many people, be uh, an uncle to a lot of people. And some, some people will wonder, why did I say husband? You see, we women have different needs. Is it some of the friends that have gone to be with the Lord? At times their wives will come for, you know, they might have difficulty or challenges. He has to be there for them as well. She has been the person that found diamond in the rough to the extent that um, she keeps him in check and keeps him grounded. So I thank Allah uh, for the senator for being so loyal, for being not just a wife, but a friend of her husband. He loves without measure and a sacrifice to give is something else. So um, for me to come to accept that, uh, it took me to really seek God to really understand where I'm at. For me not to go crazy, what is going on. He's not someone who believes in small talks with women, not even his wife. He's a man all the way, so he will keep that to himself. Even, and he doesn't want me to even talk about people. You know, if they are his friends, he's always committed to them. And I see that, and I don't want to stand before God someday and say I misled his servant. I, I won't want to do that. And that's why people have access to him. When they say, I bought me Sofundadi, I said, mm, go meet him. The hero status to your spouse, children, relations, and those who trust and follow you does not come cheaply. The hero must pay a price, a big price. Loneliness, betrayals, indignities, deprivations, denials, even incarcerations and bereavements sometimes. Those selected by providence and elected by fate are however equipped to surmount challenges. They're built to last with courage. They are of strong faith and even in moments alone, when strength fails and belief taught us, they persevere, remain consistent. For me, I don't know whether any other person has uh, used that adjective for him to describe him. For me, I always describe Bola Ahmed Tinubu as a legendary. You know, as a man that has many parts, and is a man that so many stories can be told about, because he's played his part. As Arole Odudua, I will continue to give him the adoration and respect. Olorun Olodumare ati esin dale le karo ojire a ma ba mi duro ti won gbogbo adawole won a ma yori sirere won ni subu won ni danu porogodo aye ko de ni lu fun ojo bi won se nse odun yin 
gege bi a se yuwaju fun wa nipa bi won se nto ilu olorun olodumare a ma ba mi fun won ni okun ati agbara yiye lo ma ye yele dide lo ma de adaba lorun baye se yiye won bayi ko ni ye sile fun won gbede bayi lo ma de koko lagbala iran abata ara oniri ara oni ni won this is Bola Tinobu, a Shewaju of Lagos, a Reago of Ebalan, Jagabambogo. He will remain a reference point at every juncture of our country's history. This is Bola Ahmed Adekunle Tinobu, detribalized nationalist committed democracy activist, political genius, loving husband, devoted father, philanthropist, a true friend indeed to all who call him friend. <laughs> Shiwaju Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, the blazing grace. My every prayer for him, Nicolo Munaru Buemilu. He'll be 80, he'll be 90, he'll be 100. Long life for him. Happy birthday, the Jagaba of Nigeria. Happy birthday, my good friend and a good man. Happy birthday. I wish you the best in life. I wish you long life, good health, and uh, more role to play in the development of our country. DJ Gaban, Bogu, you can trust that I have best wishes for you on your bad day. For me, the force that is behind him, that is still with him, every day of my life I pray for that force to continue to be with me too. First is to wish him good health. Is to wish him that God will be gracious. Providence will, will, be, will be kind to him and give him long life. Happy birthday. Uh, we thank God for such a wonderful life you've lived, a life of service. I want to wish you many, many more years to, of service to our motherland. And also that as you continue to grow in age, that God will increase your wisdom. And as your years, so shall your strength be. Your strength will not fail you. And uh, no matter how long you live, Moses lived 120 years. The Bible said that his eyes did not fail him, nor his natural force. I pray for you that you will live long to see the fruit of your labor and also to see your children's children walk the land. And we will live together in strength, in divine health, for as long as we want to live. And God will grant us that. Happy birthday, my love. <laughs> Show color, and it goes 
show color Mommy Remy show color When you go show color Show up. 